Hey, this is Wesley with Millwright CNC. Uh, today we are going to take a look at the touch plate that we offer. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a macros for it in UGS to, um, to probe the XYZ on it. Alright, let's head over to uh, UGS. Now to get the macros window here, what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to Windows, you're going to and it's uh, right there you click that and this macros window right here will pop up now to edit the macros you will go to machine down here to edit macros now when you're uh, looking to make a macros you'll come down here to add it pops up this blank uh, all these blank fields for you now um, you can name it right now I have the one that we're going to I'm going to show you today is uh, zero XYZ so just rename it whatever you want this is where all the code goes in the in the middle here and then we have a description now this macro that we did is for the uh, lower left of the stock and using a one quarter inch end mill you can see right here in the macros tab that it there's my title there's the description and this is what it's going to do once you uh, initiate it after you when you're ready to save it you just hit apply and okay and uh it, see macros number one appeared down here and that's where it's going to show up now one thing we're going to work on is uh, we're going to try to get this macros to be able to be uh, downloaded and imported into your copy of UGS. So what you would do once you downloaded the macros is just hit import and uh, go to where you saved it. I got touchplate XYZ macros. Open it up and it should just populate right here in your macros. Hit apply and OK and you can see that it is down there ready to be used. All right. Now the uh, this is a mock-up of the touch plate and uh, Word. You got a hole here uh, drilled out to allow for your corner of your stock to go there, and you have a ledge around two of the sides. That ledge is ten millimeters from the outside to the stock in both in two directions. That's going to be important later. The overall dimensions of the plate are 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters. And right here it is 12 millimeters thick. And around this ledge it is 14 millimeters thick. All right. Now, that code for the macros. Each line of the code, of the G code, has to be separated by this semicolon right here. Uh, and this is what it looks like when it's uh, in the macros code field. It's just going to be one long line, every line separated by a semicolon. Now I broke down that code uh, line by line and put a little description out here telling you what it does. You can pause the video and look this over, study it, whatever you want to do. Now, um, this macros is designed to work in absolute mode and in millimeters mode. Uh, you can change this if you want to, but you'll have to go through here and change the numbers appropriately for whatever mode you want to use. The beginning of the macros will change uh, whatever the present settings happen to be to absolute and millimeters. And that's what G90 and G21 will do. Now, when you start this macros, you want to be somewhere above the Z, the uh, touch plate. And um, what this line is going to do, G92, X0, Y0, Z100, is going to reset your current datums to 0, 0, 100. This just makes it easier to, uh, to move the machine where it needs to go. Now, G38.2 in UGS initiates the probe cycle. Is going to go down to Z negative 50 
or until it hits the plate, whichever happens first. It should hit the plate first because we're starting from Z100. And it's going 150 millimeters per minute. And uh, as soon as it hits, it's going to do a G92 and it's going to reset your Z to 12, which is the thickness of the touch plate above the stock. Then it's going to hop back up to Z14 and it's going to initiate a slower probe. It's going to go 60 millimeters per minute and it's going to record the position again. Then it's going to jump up to uh, Z16. It's going to kick it over to X negative 70. Now, this is a good point to, to show you uh, something important here. Since um, since we are look, uh, working on the assumption that our uh, zero is going to be the bottom or the front left of the stock, then our numbers are going to be negative X, negative Y. You can adjust this to whatever corner of the stock you want to use. You just go through your macros and change the X, Y values to the appropriate one for your corner of stock that you're working with. Uh, lower left is both negative. Uh, upper left or back left is going to be X negative Y positive. The back right is X positive Y positive. And the front right is going to be X positive Y negative. Just go through and change the appropriate values. Now the reason it is kicking it out to X negative 70 is because this plate is 70 millimeters wide and as long as you are above the stock somewhere where your uh, end mill, your bit, this is uh, our bit representative, then it is going to kick over 70 millimeters and it will be outside of the uh, touch plate area. So no matter where you are, as long as you are fully on this plate, it will kick it out uh, to a safe distance. Uh, you want to make sure that you are not at the edge of your travel though, because it will kick it out negative 70 millimeters and you want to make sure you have room for that. If you don't, then you want to uh, post up an appropriate area on your plate, change your value so that the travel is short. So you're not kicking out full 70, maybe you only have 10 millimeters, so you want to get right on the edge of the plate and kick it out 10. Just change those values to something appropriate once you have uh, imported the macros into your UGS. So it kicks out negative 70 millimeters. Now it's going to go down to Z4 because, uh, as you know, your end mills, your bits, whatever, they have the flutes, the flutes change the thickness of the end mill. So we want to make sure that we go down far enough that some thicker portion of that bit is going to touch the plate first. We want an accurate, uh, an accurate datum. So we want to make sure we get the fat part of the, the bit. It's going to initiate a probe in the X. Now the zero is somewhere over the top of that uh, touch plate. So we can hit zero and it will go over and touch the plate. And that's the initiate that initiates the probe. We're going X zero, of course, and we're going 150 millimeters per minute. And when it touches, it's going to record the uh, the position. Now the position is going to be the thickness of this ledge which is, uh, this is the edge of the plate, this is the edge of the stock, and this is the uh, difference between them, that 10 millimeters. But we also have to account for the radius of the bit that we are using. Now we're using a quarter in this example, so that works out to be, uh, the radius is uh, 3.175 uh, millimeters for a quarter inch end mill. So we had 10 plus 3.175, and since we're going to the left, that's a negative value. So we got X is negative 13.175. Now it's going to jump off of the X a little bit, and it's going to initiate that slower probe coming in at 60 millimeters per minute. And it's going to record the position again. It's going to hop off of it, X negative 15. It's going to jump up to Z16. And it's going to move in the X and the Y at the same time. 
it's going to go to the about the middle of the plate and it's going to kick it the full um, the full width off of the touch plate just make sure that we're clear of it it's going to drop back down to Z4 and it's going to initiate that probe of the Y we got Y0 we got 150 millimeters per minute for that probe it's going to touch it and it's going to be the same distance as the X because the thickness is the same and the radius is the same and since we're in the the uh, front left corner of the stock that's going to be a negative value as well it's going to come off the Y a little bit and it's going to initiate that slower 60 millimeters per minute probe and it's going to record the position again it's going to back off the Y and it's going to jump up to Z20 then it's going to move to 00. zero. Now, as soon as you remove the plate, you should be able to tell that your end mill center line is right there at that corner. One thing you want to keep in mind is uh, Z20 is the absolute height of this macros. So if you do not have 20 millimeters to travel in the Z before uh, you hit a homing switch or you just crash to the top, uh, you want to adjust that number a little bit to, to make sure you have... Uh, room for that and uh, this is going to be the code as it is seen in the UA UGS macro screen all right we're going to work hard to uh, get this where you can download it and import it into your own UGS uh, and uh, you should be able to uh, adjust it to suit your needs um, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time bye